Like every chapter, this chapter also ends with a section on selling you. That is, how do you overcome objections in a job interview? Here we are talking about objections. Let us see how you can overcome some of these objections. One common objection that the interviewer can tell you at the time of interview is, you don't have enough experience. How are you going to overcome that objection? You can talk about, I may not have experience in this particular thing that you are looking for, but in my high school and in my college career, these are the things I did and they will give me the opportunity to directly have, I mean, even though I did not have this experience directly, I have it indirectly while I was working on that particular project or while I was um, doing this particular activity in the school. So you can use that as you are, um, you know, making up for the lack of experience. The second thing is, I'm not sure you will fit in with the team. Now, this is a very important thing, the fit. The fit matters a lot. Oftentimes, when people are thinking differently, then there is a um, misfit. And misfits don't fit together, right, obviously. And oftentimes, many people leave the jobs because they are unable to go with the company culture, right? So you need to fit with the particular team. And that is where you have to show how flexible you are, how you are willing to learn and change. And that way, when you are very flexible and adaptable, then the person will feel like, okay, this person may not have the right attitude right now, but this person is willing to change and willing to learn so they that will be okay like that they may think objection number three this position doesn't pay as much as you are looking for you are looking for a lot of money and they may not be able to pay and this is where you have to think about the overall compensation it is not just the monetary compensation you have to think about the work from home flexibility or the ability to have uh, say the car expenses paid for by the company or some other type of extra vacation time or some other ways of you know uh, you can negotiate some other type of perquisites perks that that's what people call them uh, so you can get those perks so that uh, even if not everything is money you can get something else so that you can um, still you know hold on to this job at the same time you will get some benefits and uh, you are too experienced for this position that is you are overqualified and that is where you have to say hey you know what i may be overqualified but there are new challenges in this position that i want to learn from that i can contribute to and that is why i'm applying here like that you can say so the point is there will be objections in ev after every presentation and your job interview is just another presentation and you should anticipate objections now sometimes okay or not sometimes hopefully you will get the job okay every single time that you do but you don't uh, that's not the point here the point here is when you get the job they will surely ask you a question about salary at that time you have to ask yourself what am i going to tell when it comes to salary and that is where i would like you to think about this briefcase technique so what is that let us go ahead and watch this video clip
Okay, so that is briefcase technique where you are bringing a little bit of theatrix at the same time to show that you will be able to provide a lot more value by joining the company. And um, you can say that and after having that type of a conversation, probably whatever salary you ask will come to you. And that's the point. You have to show the value you can bring. And after that, you have the control of the conversation, whether it is about the perquisites or whether it is about the salary or which is about the other types of accommodations that you are looking. And if they ask for a specific number, don't give a single number. Never give a single number. Always give us give a range. I am looking for anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars, and um, I will be eligible for seventy plus mainly because I have say reason number one, reason number two, reason number three. And when you are able to present yourself in a very authoritative, confident manner, then the employer the interviewer will really think oh you know what i should probably consider this person more seriously and that way you will be able to make a very positive impression and get your job and get whatever you are anticipating and as you know chapter one said when you know sales when you are in sales you have the power to get what you want and that's exactly what we are doing here in just chapter number 11 while you are handling objections and remember you have to follow up even after at the time of interview or after the time of interview. Uh, some of the things that you can do or not do as part of sending thank you notes after interviews are given here. Uh, you have to ask for a business card. Do write individual thank you notes to each person with whom you interviewed. Do write a thank you email or note even if you are not interested in the job. You may have chosen to go elsewhere but you don't want to burn the bridges you want to cultivate a relationship for the long term so you even if you are not interested say thank you do send a thank you note within 24 hours don't delay it too long do proof your thank you email note before you send it because uh, spelling mistakes can be horrible and especially if the spelling mistake is on the receiving person's name that's even worse mike m i k e if you put m i i k e with double eyes then it will look awkward and they may not they may remember you for the wrong reasons that's the point and uh, some of the things that you want to avoid don't stop job hunting even if you had a good interview the job isn't yours until you get an offer so you have to keep looking all the time okay and in fact when you have a job offer and another job offer comes along then you can negotiate a much better salary or much more compensation from the other company because you already have a fallback plan on that don't bother the employer and follow up in a way that becomes annoying so you don't want to keep on asking them questions when will you make a decision when can i join you don't want to ask too many questions because you have just uh, interviewed with them and they have their own timeline and you don't want to be annoying don't follow up sooner than the interviewer or recruiter indicates is appropriate so as a part of interview you can ask them when is it for me when is it appropriate for me to call you back you can ask that question and they will surely tell you what they are looking for okay so it's always nice to know the time frame for the company to hire you and how you want to move forward so these are all the important things that I want you to think about when it comes to overcoming objections in a job interview. And I'm sure there will be objections and how do you deal with that? Learning how to negotiate, learning to find a common ground, trying to find win-win situation, trying to find or trying to show value that you can bring to the company in the form of the briefcase technique that we saw. All of these things can make a huge difference in your career. Okay? Thank you.